So if you haven't been living under a rock, you probably have heard about Torakaru. But if you have been living under a rock, basically Torakaru was a very popular tiger demigod VTuber who recently had been outed as being sus as having sexually assaulted somebody. It initially started when Lily had this to post my experience with Torakaru. I never thought I would come out with this. I never thought something like this could happen. I cannot with good conscience not share what happened to me when I know it could help somebody else. It was no secret Tora at one point wanted to be more than friends. However, there were some things that I didn't meet for his dating criteria at the time. When going back in our DMs at the starting after it was confirmed I was going to AX was in April. You may be wondering why I was giving into all this and letting my walls down. And my answer is that I had known him for a year. He hadn't done anything so unredeemable and horrifying yet. And I trusted him. I let my walls and guard down. And around this time, I had even begun catching feelings for him. And when he brought up the topic of having sex at AX, I was scared, but I didn't totally say no. TLDR essentially Lily lays out that Tora assaulted her by laid on top of her, kissed her without her permission. She was afraid he was going to do more if it hadn't been for one of the other party members going out into the room. And then Tora ended up posting a response confirming the things that Lily had said, saying essentially that he was a piece of shit and that he was going to be completely graduating and he wasn't going to go on hiatus. However, if anybody wanted to buy his model art and assets for the same price that he purchased them, to please email him and let him know. It which, <laughs> really? <laughs> The reason why I wanted to make a video talking about this is because I have some opinions on some tweets that have been posted and I just wanted to go over it and to give my outlook on it, some opinions, because I have a lot to say. So you're okay with potentially breaking the law because of somebody you don't like? I don't care what Tor did. If he has the rights to the product, you cannot restrict the right to transfer that to somebody else if they pay for it. Unless there is a specific contract created, you cannot do that. With the art that he purchased, that he has the right to transfer that if somebody else buys it but that's not true. Essentially, if somebody in their TOS states that you cannot resell or redistribute anything that you've commissioned from them, you can't do that. So basically anything he's previously commissioned, he's basically stuck with. And especially for the same price that he purchased it for, that's the most ridiculous concept I've ever heard of. Why would you pay full price for something that's not even like custom made to you as an individual, right? If your first response to today's news about a mildly known male VTuber being a gross piece of shit is to go, man, now people are gonna start man hating. You are also the problem. If you aren't doing anything wrong, you have literally nothing to worry about. It has no way of affecting you unless this is your wake up call that maybe you're doing creepy shit and don't wanna be called on it. Just don't be a fucking weirdo, holy sh**. If you as an individual feel called out due to the Tora Karu situation and you feel guilt by association, even though it has nothing to do with you, you need to take a look within yourself and figure out what it is you need to do to work on yourself to be a better person. Are VTubers ready for the conversation that the rampant sexuality that permeates the community is actively harmful? You place trust in individuals who are often nameless, faceless, and risk almost nothing to just disappear from the internet in a highly sexualized environment. There is a reason we continuously find out about VTubers being irresponsible and abusive in their treatment of others. Be safe. Protect yourself. Require more from those you surround yourself with. So-and-so said they're cool is not enough to give you trust to random people on the internet. This wouldn't have flown under the radar for so long if we didn't normalize hypersexual interactions as friendly. This guy is a complete pig and got away with too much for too long. I feel sad for everyone affected. We need to protect the community better. And this is why when I was younger, as a millennial, your parents, when the internet first became a thing, is that they said that you shouldn't trust strangers on the internet. You shouldn't, you know, you know, talk to them, don't give them personal information, don't do all that stuff. Time has passed to the point where the internet is not... I don't want to say dangerous, but it is dangerous. It's still dangerous. It's less dangerous than it used to be 10, 20 years ago, but it's still dangerous. Like you shouldn't be putting all of your trust into somebody, especially somebody you've never met before. Like if you've hung out with them a couple different times after, you know, interacting online and you meet up in person, then yeah, you have a little bit of, of a better foundation to, you know, give them trust. You have to have this wall, is why I'm gonna describe it, uh, this wall between yourself and the other person. You have to be cautious. You can trust people, but you can still be cautious around them. Just, just be aware. The thing is, uh, normalizing hypersexual interactions, I 
think it depends upon the person on this. I myself am a hypersexual person. I don't choose to be this way. It's in response to my own personal trauma that happened to me years ago. And a lot of people don't know how to deal with it themselves. And it's a thing, it's a process that people go through. I don't use it as an excuse for when I make somebody uncomfortable. I always try to make sure that my friends know, anybody I plan to be friends with know ahead of time that I am a hypersexual person. I do talk about sex and sexual related stuff pretty frequently if I'm very comfortable with the person but if it, if they make clear to me that they're not into that they're not into talking about sex in a casual manner then I will not discuss anything of sexual nature I, I probably won't even try and make a sexual joke a sexually charged joke with them because th at that point I just let them lead so if they make the joke then I will reciprocate the joke but I do not initiate if if they have already told me that they are not comfortable with it and it takes a lot of maturity and it takes a lot of time to be aware of that kind Kind of thing make your friends comfortable it's not hard it really is not why do men pick now during a sexual assault issue to be like not all men what about the good men show me male vtubers this is just drama blah 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 like now is not the time if you're not that type of man you don't need to promote that you are good most the i'm the good guy types are the ones that do this shit you should never have to brag about something you are if your actions show true. It's very hard for me to talk about the whole not all men situation because on the one hand, I agree. It's not all men that are pieces of sh who basically sexually assault, you know, their friends in a playful manner, quote. But it's not the good time to be like, hey, you know, I'm not like Torokaru. I'm a pretty decent guy. Like this, this situation is not about you. This is not about you. It shouldn't be the time for you to like, basically say I'm so much better than him you guys should hang out with me and be my friend like don't do that it's not about you it's not about just trying to say it. not all men it's not it's really not just just don't don't do it I agree there was a lot of reasons I went with the model I did but one of them was I wasn't interested in trying to present as something I'm not in the attempt to seduce people based on my model if you're hot for this ugly mug that's entirely on you because I ain't trying here also, dudes, stop trying to seduce people. Stop love bombing them and promising them things you have no intent on doing. Flirting and sex stuff is cool, but it has to be mutual and consensual. Let them show you that they are interested before you do anything, period. So basically, Rimbo saying what I said earlier, just you gotta learn to communicate. You gotta have mutual consent. You have to be aware, you know, and just know when things are okay. And especially when this stuff is online, you don't have that body language factor in play. You only have voice and you only have text. And that those are, the, unless you're actually doing video calls and that's a completely different thing. But a lot of the time you're not doing this in person with no body language. It's just voice and text. And it's kind of harder to vet people and how they're feeling and what they're going through and everything else. So it's just best to verbally and textually <laughs> get the Set. you know another one can we just have a break just more twitter drama i am tired i am tired too tired of watching these monsters get close to people knowing that they may be their next victim and having to stay silent because it's not my story to tell i am tired of seeing more names on their lists i am tired of watching happy bubbly people turn cold and distant because their consent was ignored and the violation broken something inside them whether you mean to or not, you are dismissing victims. You are lessening the crimes against them. Victims remain silent in this community out of fear. Fear of the person who violated them and the fear of the rest of us violating them more. The things we say to a victim are behind their backs in places we think they won't see. When they break their silence can affect them just as deeply as the original violation. I ask of you now, think before speaking. This is a thing where it's it's hard <clears throat> to talk about these kind of things in a public setting because there's so much stigma about coming out uh, against abusers. So and there's a lot of different factors when somebody tries to come out and talk about it because we have the people who in the past have made claims against people falsely. And I can think of a couple people that come to mind when it, when it comes to that. So immediately people are kind of like, oh, well, we got to wait to see his side, which exactly what is what happened with Tora thing because everybody wanted the wait to see what he would say about it. Turns out he just agreed with what Lily ended up putting out anyway. It's like you have that where people are making false accusations against people who literally have not done anything to deserve it. And then of course you have the actual cases of assault and everything else and it sucks. It 
It sucks when it happens and you think to yourself, oh, it couldn't happen to me and it, this is ridiculous. Like, you know, and it, the thing is, it happens to more people than what you think. It's hard to come out and talk about it because you fear what the person who abused you will do to you. And a lot of the time it's a power play. Your abuser has more power than you in these types of situations because if you speak out, you get in trouble. And that's the mindset that the abusers and everything in this kind of situation have put on, on the victims. In some instances even, the abusers actually are charismatic. They have more popularity, they have more friends, they have a better support system than the victim does sometimes. And it may not be true for everybody, of course. They they are scared. Of course, as I said earlier, you can, you're allowed to be cautious, you know, and wait for the full story, but you don't have to voice your opinion. It's better to support the victim, even if it turns out the victim lied, than it is to support the abuser and the abuser actually being an abuser. If it's not an enthusiastic yes, you don't have consent. This goes for sending pictures. This goes for sexual conversations. This goes for touching someone. A lack of no is not the presence of a yes. While we are on the topic of consent, consent should be enthusiastically given always. Consent can be taken away at any time before or during the act. Coercion is not consent. Being under the influence of drugs or alcohol means they cannot consent. Body language is not consent. Coercion is not consent for sure. Body language, I have to disagree with the body language is not consent because body language can be consent. You can nod, you know, you can nod consent. You can give a thumbs up. You can give positive reinforcement through the body language. Body language can be consent. I think it just depends upon the person. If you're going to slut it up with others, flirting, sexting, etc., over the internet, you need to make sure it's admissible, intentions are laid out, and that the other can voice their uncomfortability openly and safely. And for God's sake, don't go getting into a relationship then go around saying, I love you to hundreds of other people. If someone wants to stop stuff that's been going on, all of a sudden you immediately stop and respect their wishes no matter what. Regarding in-person meetings, you need to treat it as if you're meeting them for the very first time. It is entirely different moving from DMs to in-person interactions. What you've done in DMs is entirely separate. It doesn't matter what sensual stuff you've done prior. If you're going to hook up, just like above, make sure it's admissible, intentions are laid out, and especially that the other is a thousand percent okay with everything. You need to assure each other that you both can feel safe voicing any and all uncomfortable things and concerns. Some people are not equipped to handle these situations as they should, and even if they are, you need care about and respect each other as a person first and foremost. Double check, triple check, get annoying with how many times you assure each other you're both on the same page and that each other's happiness and safety is top priority. Horikaru is an overly affectionate person. He would say I love you to his friends, family, lovers, anybody he was basically talking to. This isn't necessarily a red flag and I'm going to explain to you why. It is fine to me if somebody who I am friends with and have been friends with for some time tells me that they, that they love me as long as they have clearly stated that our relationship is purely platonic. I do not mind. There's a difference between your, your friends giving you clear and healthy communication communication. My friends being overly affectionate with me does not bother me so long as we've already communicated that our relationship is purely platonic and they un also understand that I may not reciprocate and say I love them back. It's very rare for me to say I love you to my friends. Uh, it's very rare for me to say I love you back to them if they do tell me they love me. It's not necessarily a red flag if you've already been friends for some time, in my personal opinion. It is weird, however, if you haven't talked to them for very long, I'm talking like maybe under a month, and they're immediately telling you that they love you, and I that's that's a little strange, that's a little weird. Um, In real life meetings between text and online, they are significantly different. I do agree with that. There's just certain things that are not there when you're communicating with your friends online, even in a voice call, sometimes even over video chat, that they're just not present when you meet them for the first time in person. You kind of have to adjust to it a little bit. And I mean, like online dating is the same way, so I wouldn't see why it wouldn't be any different when you first meet your friends online. I have a lot of words. After looking through our conversation, I realized I am also one of Torikaru's pawns. He used to have a quick relief back when I used to post pictures of in real life me on this account. This entire time, I genuinely thought he was only joking with me because we were really good friends at one point. Only to find out he would speak the same way to so many other women, and I am mortified. He was very blatant over the not safe for work topics, despite me telling him over VC several times that I was married. 
Yet he would slide in my DMs telling me these things. I never engaged in any of the attempts he made. I would simply ignore them and move on to and move on to a different conversation for my own sake. I should have seen the signs, and I am an absolute idiot for not speaking up to him, telling him how excessive it got and how uncomfortable I ended up being later on in our friendship. I genuinely, genuinely thought he was kidding around, and I'm sorry. My heart goes out to the other victims and to those who had it worse than me. You shouldn't be blaming yourself for not knowing when somebody is love bombing you. You're not going to always pick up on cues from people who could potentially cause a problem with you. It's not your fault. Don't blame yourself for signs that you missed. Just remember to be kind to each other. Be aware. Be safe. Use your head. Critical thinking. I don't know. I'm, I'm tired.